Hey guys, this is Jerry. So this is a topic I've wanted to talk about for a long time. And it's about doing business with your friends. You know, they always say you don't want to mix friendship with business. And you don't want to go that extreme, of course. It is possible to do business with your friends. But I've had bad experiences, I'm sure. Anyone who's tried to do business with their friends have probably had bad experiences. And it requires a certain thing. I think it, it just requires a certain mindset and maybe a certain rules that you have to apply to it. So that's what I wanted to explain today. Because the problem with doing business with friends is that if it goes sour, you might not just lose the business, you might lose the friendship too, right? That's the fear. So that's what a lot of people tell you to avoid doing business with friends. I think doing business with your friends, the biggest thing you have to do, this is something just in life, this is a good idea, but since we're just talking about this situation right now, you have to keep the communication as transparent as possible and have evidence. Because with friends, we tend to be on the same page, at least socially, maybe even emotionally. That's probably why we're friends. So we think when it comes to business, we'll be on the same page. But when you mix money, you mix that type of labor in, a lot of times two people are not always on the same page. So you have to keep the communication constant. You have to keep the communication clear. And you have to have evidence of it. Another thing that friends do is we tend to forgive each other or forget bad things that happen because we're friends. We give each other the benefit of the doubt. Slash, we don't want to cause too much drama and tension. But when you're doing business with your friends, you have to get all that shit out of the way as quick and as early as possible so it doesn't build up. So what does that mean? When you're doing business with your friends, you better log everything. What, whatever you talked about, boom, this is what we're going to do. If there's any sort of verbal agreement or even verbal disagreement, show it. Document it. And so that way you have all this proof. And of course, if you you should always have a contract. Now, doesn't mean go to a lawyer and sign like a 10-page contract, but at least basic little terms, the general gist, right? You got to get that in a contract. I remember when I was a senior in college, I lived with one of my friends. He was a friend, but we still had a roommate contract and it helped. It helped. I mean, we never got into any conflicts ever, but the fact that we had a little, it was like a three sentence contract or something like that, but it helped because if things ever hit the fan, we would have this thing that said, look, we both agreed to this. I will admit it felt a little weird when he's like, oh, Jerry, just sign this. You know, this is something that I just do. But thinking back on it, he was ahead of his time. This is what you have to do, especially if you're in any kind of situation with friends that could involve money and professional advancements, etc. One thing that happens a lot is because we're friends, you might have assumptions that your friend understands, let's say, what the going rate is for something. Or your friend says, oh, I always give adequate compensation, blah, blah, blah. And your idea of adequate compensation could be different than what your friend's is. That's another reason why you have to get the terms, especially the monetary terms, down. I had a situation. I had a friend, and he wanted my help on this trailer. And he said, dude, Jerry, I'll give you the whatever market rate, compensation, whatever is the stuff you deserve. I was a filmmaker type of person. So I was like, okay, he understands how much to give me. So I trusted him as a friend. I didn't explicitly get the amount of money he was going to pay me down immediately. And that was stupid of me. I shouldn't have trusted him as a friend because the thing is when it comes to money, people who let's say are struggling, which he probably was at the time, they will find reasons to keep on to the money, right? Survival. I can't fault him for being self-interested, but of course I can fault him for not treating me like a friend. But again, when he came at me initially and asked me to help him with the trailer, I should have been the one to said, well, last time I did a trailer for someone, I charged 600 bucks for what I did. And this time you're a friend and you're asking me to do a little more than what I did last time. I'll still charge you 600 bucks. That would have been very reasonable. Should have typed an email to him or something. That way I have evidence. But I just didn't go through those steps because, again, I trusted him as a friend. We got along, right? So I just thought, yeah, he's kind of a person who's striving to be in Hollywood. He understands how much work it takes and how much money. And so I just didn't go through those steps. By the way, the reason why I'm talking about this was about two weeks ago, he 
try to get back into my life even though I cut them out of my life and it got pretty ugly because I had my frustrations that I've never expressed to them and I mean I did express to them but not with that level of anger so the first two times I talked to him about what he did he kind of had other excuses but this time I really just was the most blunt I've ever been with him and I had another friend, a very good friend with me, who saw the whole thing objectively. And so he got to weigh in on it to me later after it happened. But it was a very interesting incident that happened recently. And so I really have been reflecting on it for about two weeks. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to record this vlog. He ultimately said this to me, which is true. And it's ultimately why I don't talk to him anymore, because I realized he doesn't really think of me as a friend. But he's like, Jerry, it's not about friendship. You just did bad business. You know, you should have kept me accountable, basically. That's what he said. And it's heartbreaking to hear someone you thought is a friend basically tell you, no, it's nothing personal. It's not even about friendship. It's just, I saw the opportunity. I could screw you over, and I did. I mean, that's basically not sugarcoating it, what he said to me in another way. I said to him back, I said, dude, well, if that's the case, then it justifies why I decided not to be your friend. So you shouldn't be trying to get back into my life. You just saw me as a talented guy that you could take advantage of. I saw you as a friend. That's why I even helped you. From his point of view, it's like, oh, Jerry never defined how much money he wanted. And I told him I'd give a market rate. What the fuck does that mean? Even if I said that, I, he, it's not like he has documentation of it. I'm just telling you this story because people, especially when it's a friend, people make positive assumptions based on what your friends say, but they might have not meant it that way, or maybe it just came out of their mouth. They didn't even realize what it meant, etc. And the final thing I want to say is besides the little micro lessons I gave you guys about communication, etc., from a macro scale, and this is good with people in general, but especially with friends, you should put them into three categories. One category are the friends you just trust with your lives. All of you have about five of those, plus or minus two, but most people have five plus or minus two friends they can trust with their lives. Now, these are friends that, just for good practice, you should still communicate really well, even do contracts with, but when needed, as in you don't have the time or the patience or whatever, you can potentially skip on some of those legal things. Find those friends, the friends you can trust with your lives. You probably could do business with them. Still be careful, of course. You always have to be careful. And then you got this middle group of friends. These are friends that if the terms are defined very clearly and they're doing something that like they really can do, etc., it's good. But you do not step out of the boundaries. Oftentimes, these are friends where misunderstandings happen. There's a third group of friends right here. These are the friends you never do business with. Honestly, these are friends that probably shouldn't be your friends anyways. Like, the guy that kind of screwed me over, he had a history of manipulating people. Like, he went to college, and he was dating a girl at the time, and he made the girl pay for it. And after he finished college, he left her. And he's done that many times to other people. At his birthday party, you could tell all of these people at his birthday party were new people. He didn't have any close friends from all his years, and he grew up in this state in California. Those should have been warning signs, but I didn't see that because he's a charming dude, and we got along pretty well. If I were more rational, and now I'm a little older, I should have put him in that category. It's like, these people you'd never do business with. I hope that helps, man. Uh, friends and business, remember, friends you can trust your life with, friends that you have to define the terms with, and the friends you never, ever bring too close into you business-wise or personally. And you need those friends too. You need the friends where once in a while, let's say you're, you and your group trying to have fun. Maybe you call this guy. He comes in and it's fun for the night or something like that. But you keep them like that. Inner circle, your friend circle, your acquaintance circle, basically. Maybe that's another way of classifying. Those are just some thoughts on doing business with friends. After I laid it out on him, I'm like, dude, I wish you the best. I understand what happened, and I've learned a lot of great lessons from this, but get the fuck out of my life. In fact, I told him, I said, if you try to contact me again, I might get a restraining order on you. And my friend, after after this guy left, my friend was like, damn, Jerry, saw you with claws. The reason I had claws was because I was serious, right? I'm not kidding about the restraining order if that guy tries to contact me again. The thing about human nature is... We usually don't learn after the first time. For me, it takes about three times before I learn. I've been fucked over three times when it comes to creative projects and money. I've learned my lesson now. 
and I hope to impart it on you. It doesn't have to be creative projects. Any projects you do with friends, you just have to be careful. And remember my paradigm, the, the three tiers of friends that, that you could potentially put into and then whether to consider doing business with them. And of course, ultimately, try not to be, do business with your friends. But again, it's unavoidable. So hope this helps. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.